but all right so yeah so if you missed the beginning we're going to be taking a look at three graphics cards we're going to be taking a look at the gtx 980 ti which was the flagship from 2015 so that's eight years old now the gtx 1070 which is the card that was on par we're going to test that theory here in a minute uh, that came out in 2016, and then we're going to be taking a look at the Vega 56, which was an X70 class competitor, which came out in 2017, which is six years old. So eight to six year old graphics cards. We're going to be playing modern games, every game in here besides Crisis Remastered, because I just left it in there because it's part of my new suite. Every other game was either heavily updated or released in 2022 or newer. So these are the latest games. So we're going to see how they do. If the claims that X70 class cards are actually as fast as the previous gen uh, flagship as well. And yeah, if you have a card like this or at this level of performance, maybe you don't need to upgrade depending on what it is that you're trying to do. So, all right, we're going to jump on over to, to some slides and we're going to check this out. And yeah. Oh, before I go into that, uh, if you are interested in any of the test bench stuff, it's the same things I've been using, but all of that is in the video description down below, so you can check that out for yourself. All right, so we're going to kick things off with Cyberpunk 2077. All games were run at high settings, as this is what most gamers are going to use. Ultra is something you... I don't know. I've n I never use ultra settings. High is where I start, and I go down from there personally. And yeah, if you're using graphics cards at this age, high is probably going to also be your target. Plus, once we get to newer graphics cards, I think it also makes sense. So that's why I didn't go with something like medium for, you know, to try to help out a six gigabyte graphics card. Anyway, so Cyberpunk 2077, kicking things off 1080p. Uh, we can see that the uh, 980 Ti is the pack leader. So the oldest of the three graphics cards is winning with 40 FPS on the 1% low. The Vega 56 is behind at 33, and then we have the 1070 at 38. So basically margin of error there. And then we can see here at 1440p, the 980 Ti gains an even stronger lead at 36 FPS. So it only drops a little bit, whereas the other two kind of fall off the map, going down to 28 and 24. Now, is this game playable on these graphics cards? With VRR, I would say that these guys would be okay. Obviously, you're going to want to drop down to medium low settings on most things, but obviously the textures, even on a, at high, which, by the way, is the highest you have on Cyberpunk, uh, still just fine on a six gigabyte card. So, yeah, good to go. All right, next up is Crisis Remastered. Once again, high preset. Now, this one here, the 1% lows get smashed real hard. It's typically mostly a CPU uh, limitation. You'll see it throughout all the tests. All of the games are, or all the GPUs are relatively low. But anyways, we can see here at 1080p, the 980 Ti comes in at 44 on the 1% low. The Vega 56, however, does the best here, likely due to its extreme memory bandwidth for the time at 49, and then the 1070 at 41. So yeah, we, we have a pretty good gap between these two and margin error probably on that one. 1440p, they're all basically the same. All right, next up is Gotham Knights, and at 1080p, we can see they're all pretty much the same, uh, except the Vega 56 does fall behind a little bit on this one on the 1% low, so that's about a 10% advantage for both NVIDIA cards. And then at 1440p, what I found interesting is the 1070 actually did the best. It was able to pull ahead, and this could be maybe something to do with VRAM limitations, as we see that the, the, that they are the same here. And the 980 Ti has significantly more memory bandwidth than the 1070. So my guess is you would have to drop textures to medium, and then this guy would jump back up. But the performance loss there isn't that big of a deal, and they're all roughly the same. All right, so next up is God of War. And well, that script is flipped. Uh, we see that the 980 Ti and the Vega 56 do very well, hitting 60 and 63 FPS on the 1% lows. The 1070 is all the way back here at 50. So that's, you know, a pretty significant gap between these guys. And I was like, wow, this is definitely one of the largest gaps that you will see. But this is also a game that is the most heavy on the graphics card, believe it or not. This game is extremely GPU dependent, uh, likely due to the fact that it's meant to run on Jaguar cores. So the CPU that you're using, especially a 13900K, is going to be just way more than this thing needs. Jumping up to 1440p at 41 FPS, and this is where the Vega 56 takes a nicer lead. That's a 10% lead right there. Yep, 4 FPS is 10% when you're dealing with lower numbers like this. 
Um, and then we have 35. In reality, you're going to be wanting to play this game at 1080p with these cards. But yeah, it's going to play just fine over here. You're going to definitely want VRR with a 1070. All right, next up is Hogwarts Legacy. This is not in account for the, uh, the game average because they updated the game before I could run tests on all the graphics cards. And that did change the performance profile. Uh, so this game will run better than what you're seeing here. So, but anyways, this is what I did on every graphics card but two. I was able to get done with uh, pre pre update. So we're just going to use those numbers for one to one comparisons. But yeah, all graphics cards are going to be about ten percent higher. Just so you know. But anyways, we have the 980 Ti and Vega 56, 44 uh, and 45 FPS on the 1% lows. The 1070 is a good chunk behind again. So this is very similar to what we just saw. Same sort of story at 1440p, although the 980 Ti pulls ahead by one margin of error. Uh, but the 1070 does slip behind even further on this particular game. All right, so next up is Modern Warfare 2 2022. Uh, I use the Ultra preset because they don't have a high preset. So I went from the max preset and just went down one notch so we went that route uh as we can see here at 1080p both the nvidia cards believe it or not are actually very far behind coming in with a one percent low of 29 and 20, uh, 27 fps and then the vega 56 dominating with 43 so amd definitely made sure or more likely um activision made sure that this build of their engine runs very well on AMD hardware because this is not optimized. AMD stopped uh, doing Vega optimized drivers, I believe, a while ago. So they'll still do like security updates like NVIDIA does for Maxwell. But as far as I know, this is not per game optimized. I could be proven wrong on that one, but hey, it's doing really well here. 1440p, we get down to 18 and 17. So that's unplayable. Uh, and 26. So even though this is significantly ahead, I would say that's uh, it's not really worth it. However, even at 1080p, really the only graphics card I would recommend playing this game would be the Vega 56. Okay, so next up is the Plague Tale Requiem, and we're going to see something a little bit different. We see the 980 Ti comes in at 1080p at 33 FPS, goes up to 42 on the Vega 56, which is really good, but we see the 1070 actually pull ahead at 37. Uh, this is a newer ue4 game and we know how well optimized uh the gtx 10 series was for ue4 and DirectX 11 and we can see that that's probably paying dividends in this particular game now jumping up to 1440p the 980 ti and 1070 they're basically tied and then the vega 56 still holds a nice little lead next up is spider-man margin of error at 1080p margin of error at 1440p Big old nothing burger, but they all play the game well enough that I'd say with VRR, man, you're good to go even at 1440p, which is pretty surprising. This was the first game I tested, and the first card I tested was the Vega 56, and I'm like, this is pretty damn good, because I started at 1440p, and I'm like, huh, yeah, I could play this. All these cards, just fine. So this game is hyper-optimized, and yeah, all these cards are basically the same. Next up, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. In this one, we see the 980 Ti coming in at 68. Uh, Vega pulls ahead again at 73, and then we have the 1070 at 65, which is basically on par with the 980 Ti. But Vega does have a nice little lead there, going up to 1440p, 1070 and 980 Ti, roughly the same. And then the Vega 56 does have a little bit of a lead there. All right, now we have The Witcher 3. If you guys have noticed, not every game behaves the same. Every game is different and likes different things. So Witcher 3 over here, we see the 980 Ti comes in at 88 FPS on the 1% low. And then we have the Vega 56 at 84. So these are relatively close. And then the 1070 is all the way back here at 67. So my guess would be memory bandwidth as these guys have significantly more than this one being the limitation. Going up to 1440p, things kind of even up a bit. The 1070 doesn't drop off quite as much as the other two. 64, 62, and 53. All of these are playable at uh, 1440p high settings with The Witcher 3 with the next-gen update, uh, assuming you have VRR. And if you don't have VRR, as long as you have a Vega 56 or a 980 Ti, well, V-Sync will work just fine. Next up is Total War Warhammer 3, and we have the 980 Ti at 1080p coming in at 50 FPS on the 1% low, and both the 1070 and Vega 56 coming in at 43. 
And moving on over to 1440p, what's kind of interesting is we see the 980 Ti does drop down the most, down to 33. The Vega 56 falls off the map for some reason. This game loves NVIDIA. I'm just going to say that. After running all my tests, it likes NVIDIA way more than it does AMD. This is definitely an NVIDIA heavy title. Just getting that out there. The fact that the Vega 56 is hanging in over here is very impressive. Uh, but that drops away down to 26, and then we have 30 on the 1070. It's not that big of a difference between all of these. I'd say that this is a pretty decent sized gap, but you're going to be playing at 1080p anyway. And the best experience, believe it or not, is the 980 Ti. All right, so that brings us on over to our 10 game average. Hogwarts is removed for the reasons mentioned. Uh, because I couldn't run all of the graphics cards with the same version of the game, so it just wouldn't be apples to apples. So we're just going to take that out from the overalls. If you want to add it in yourself, you can do so. All right, so taking a look at 1080p, we have the GTX 980 Ti that comes in with an average 1% low FPS of 53, Vega 56 at 54, so it's slightly ahead. And then we have the 1070 at 49. Now, these guys are all within spitting distance of each other, but the 1070 is about 10% slower uh, than the other two in more modern titles. Jumping on over to 1440p, it's kind of the same story, just everything drops down. Looking at these numbers, yes, 1080p on these cards, still definitely playable, and that's with a high preset. You can tune uh, your settings down a little bit more, mix of medium, low, and high, and you can get these well over 60 in all games on your 1% lows, definitely. 1440p would definitely be a bigger stretch. I would say just stick with 1080p with these cards. Well, alrighty, guys. I, I hope you found that interesting. I did, uh, especially seeing how powerful the GTX 980 Ti really was. You know, it's a 2015 graphics card, still more than capable of playing games at 1080p with a high preset, keeping the games at very playable frame rates. It's only really let down by the fact that it's VRR, is extremely niche. You need to have a monitor with a G-Sync chip and it'll only work over DisplayPort. It's technically there, but you have to have all of those. Obviously, once Pascal hit, you can go ahead and use any FreeSync monitor via DisplayPort. And believe it or not, the Vega also does not support VRR over HDMI. That I did not know, but being that I have the LG OLED and I was using HDMI, obviously I tested that firsthand. So FreeSync does not work on the Vegas over HDMI, which uh, is, is a little interesting because I'm fairly certain my RX 580 did because I used it on my LG OLED upstairs and I'm like 99% sure FreeSync was working there. So I found that a little bit interesting, but overall I'd say these cards have held up very, very well. And then for the question of, is the 70 class on par with the previous generation's uh, flagship? Kind of. Uh, obviously the AMD card is, it's virtually neck and neck. I mean, there's one FPS difference between them at 1080p, even today. And that's likely due to the fact that they both have a lot of memory bandwidth. Now the 1070 at the time likely was closer, but as games became more demanding, higher textures, just more stuff needing to go through that memory bus, the 256 bit GDDR5, yeah, non X by the way, um, that likely is what's holding it back. So in reality, I think the GPU core could do it if it had a wider memory bus or faster RAM. So during its time, yes, I would say it probably was on par, but nowadays, not so much. It's about 10% behind. Now, if you have a 1070, you're not gonna be like, oh man, I should totally go get a Vega 56. That's such a good upgrade. No, it's definitely not that big of a deal, but uh, we now know that... Eh, <laughs> The memory bus matters and memory bandwidth really matters. We're starting to figure this out with uh, CPU side. We're starting to figure this out with the GPU side, especially when you start looking at things long term. The bigger you go, usually the longer your stuff will last. But yeah, I found this super interesting. If you have one of these cards and if you play at, once again, 1080p, you don't have to worry about it. And even 1440p in most games that we looked at with lower settings, I would imagine could work. And some of them, even with high, were definitely doable. So yeah. Good to know. Um, I'm having fun with this one. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to show you guys next week what we'll do. As I mentioned to the live streamers that are watching here, uh, we'll take a look at the 1080 Ti and then the RX 5700 XT 
And then the, uh, what was the other one? The 2070 Super is what I used. I polled you guys and asked which one's the real 2070. The community said the 2070 Super was the real 2070. So we'll look at that one next week, which by the way, even if you are watching live, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And next Friday, we will go ahead and do that live and I'll put up the video later. So, alrighty guys, um, that's pretty much it for that one. And let me go ahead and see what you guys are talking about.